Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Work of Heart, a love dating simulator game. This game is played for two to four players, takes roughly about 45 minutes to play, and ages 16 and up. In the game, you play as yourself, uh, and you are attempting to woo one of the characters in the game. There are three game modes. You can play the harem mode, or competitive mode, or team mode, uh, and play against one or multiple different love interests that you're trying to obtain. But in this case, I'll just talk about the harem mode for gameplay. You're basically going to be moving around the game board, completing tasks, filling in movement spaces, obtaining new perks, playing action cards, and trying to gain your love interest's interest. Uh, you're going to be moving to their location, making affection rolls, and gaining victory points on the bottom of your track here. Utilize your action cards and perks the best as you can, and after five turns, or five rounds for every day, and there being five days, at the end of the last day, you'll check to see how many points you have. The bottom of your track here, any bonus love cards that you might have, uh, and potentially any other cards, and you'll score those up on whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Okay, let's talk about the setup, how to play, and of course, my review. To begin setup for the game Work of Heart, the first thing you do is you take the main game board out and place it in the middle of the table within reach of all players. Then, for each player playing the game, place their meeple, and uh, their color, in the middle of the quad here. This is a double-layered board, and you'll notice the spots or spaces that you can go on throughout the paths have been indented, but to start off with, you're gonna actually place them right, right in the middle here where there's no indentation. Then, choose a random character to play as your love interest. Uh, today, we're going to be playing against this, uh, or trying to get this uh, sporty gal, and she's going to start on the track. You'll draw one of the cards and place it down, and in this case, it's Nicole Perez, and it'll tell you where she starts. And on Monday, she starts in the track, so you place her on the big circle that says track. Then, you're going to go ahead and take the two markers for your day, which is Monday, and the round, which is round one. Your board is now done. Give each player a player board. With the player board is going to come the meeple that you already placed, as well as the eight different perk slots that you'll be placing on your board. There's green, blue, purple, red, orange, yellow, the wild, which is uh, a unique mojo one, and finally is your heart points, which you'll place currently at zero. Everything goes to zero. Each player is going to get two action cards from the action card deck, as well as a bunch of these movement markers that they'll be using throughout the game. Additionally, outside of the game board, you'll have event cards. Shuffle the deck and place it within reach of all players. Set aside any characters that you're not going to be trying to woo this game. Take one bonus card for each player. Have them look at uh, the deck and choose one and place it into its own deck. So in a four-player game, you'll have four of these. In a two-player game, you'll have two. These are bonus victory points that you can obtain at the end of the game if you meet their conditions. Shuffle the action card deck. And, of course, deal out the two that I said. And uh, take the uh, additional character cards that you don't need, that aren't Nicole Perez in this case, and remove them from play. Last thing but least is you'll take the two die, your affection roll and your movement roll die, and place them somewhere within reach, and then you're pretty much ready to begin Work of Heart. Let's talk about how to play. Work of Heart is a roll to move style, got this classic modern thing going on where on your turn you're going to take a die, that is your six sided die here, and you are going to roll it. That roll is going to indicate a number of pips, and that number of pips is how many spaces you must move. You have to move the exact number, but you can choose the order on the path that you'd like to go. The path is going to be simulated by these little walking spaces here, and they're connected to each other with a path on the grid. You can always move in any direction, you just can never move back to a space you already previously visited on the same turn. When you move, you'll move your character, you'll stop on a space, and then you will take your movement token and place it on that space, covering that location. Whatever the location is, is what you're going to gain in the game, and we'll talk about a few of them. Uh, the first one is going to be the colored spaces. There are a number of colored spaces, a total of seven, uh, such as strength or intelligence, uh, drama, etc., etc. These spaces, when you land on them, you will actually cover them up. So in this case, I can go one, two, three, place myself here, and cover up an orange space, and I will move my strength perk one to the right. So for each of these spaces, you're going to simply move your perks one space. When you move your perks, uh, your perk spaces to the right, there is going to be two spaces that are relevant. One is going to be the perk slot, which will indicate that you've now unlocked the right-hand side perk to that color on your game board. And the other is going to be a little heart that says one. That's a victory point. These are also used for affection rolls, but we'll cover that a little bit later. 
The next spaces that you can affect are the event card spaces. When you land on one of these spaces, you'll do the same thing. You'll land on the space, you'll cover it up with a movement marker, you'll draw an event card, and you will do what it says. There are two different types of cards. One is everybody gets to do it, and the other is just you. You can either make a choice based on the stats that you have that you have to either combine or have simply one of. It'll say, oh, if you have two purple, if you have, so if you have purple and red, uh, add up those two scores and then choose one of these three options based on what you're able to afford as far as currency goes. So if you have seven, you'll be able to choose pretty much any of the three options and gain the valuable benefit. Otherwise, it'll say all players get plus one to charm, humor, or tenacity. And then you'll discard the card. Another space here is the uh, action space. The action space is gonna allow you to draw an action card. You start with two, but you can get more. And at the end of every uh, five rounds, a new day will spawn, and you'll actually get to draw up to two in your hand, but you can never have more than seven. And then you have the mojo space. It's very similar to the other perks, uh, but instead of it being a specific color, it's a wild. And there are two perks you can gain from them that affect your uh, affection roles that you need in order to obtain the character that you're trying to woo at the end of the game. And those are the pretty much main basic spaces. There are two other spaces in the game. Uh, one is the buildings space. These are like the student center, dorms, frat house, library, healthcare, and the gym. When you land on these spaces, you can then stop on them even if you don't have if you do, if you even if you have more movement it's the only space that you can do that on other than the larger spaces so if i have six i want to go one two three four five and six i can actually stop before there and land on the dorms and increase my purple perk by one uh the other spaces these big circular pink ones here like the theater the track computer lab sound studio college and the uh, college hall and the visual arts center are only for affection roles Basically every day your love interest will move to a new one of these spaces and you're going to have to track them down. You're going to have to go to their space and then attempt to make an affection roll. You can do this at any point on any round each day. And each day you're only going to have one shot to try and woo them. You're basically going to go to their space and attempt an affection roll. You'll roll the affection die. And then based on the number that you roll or numbers, you'll check to see their stats. Each character has three stats. In this case, mine is orange, blue, and purple that I need to get. Um, and if I have a one, two, three, that affects all stats. If it's a one and three, it just affects the first and third stat. And if it's a two, it'll just affect the second stat. So more numbers give you a more likely chance to be able to woo this character. We'll just say that I got all three and I have a board that looks something like this. Uh, after that, I will check to see, okay, I need a purple, blue, and orange. My orange is two, my purple is zero, my blue is one. That gives me three. I'll take this other die, the movement die, and I'll roll this die. I got a one, total of four. If I want to woo her, I need at least a five or higher and be at the track location. Because I rolled a four, I do not gain her affection. However, had I rolled something like a six and I added that to my three, that would be eight, which is more than five. Thusly, I would gain her affection and I would move my pink heart marker up one space to the right, giving me two points for the end of the game. And as you can see, this is a way that you can gain two points for free, basically, each, uh, each day, anytime during a round. Uh, and there are five different times you can do this. So you can gain 10 points from doing this throughout the game. Once each player has basically attempted to woo, hopefully, by the end of the fifth day, the uh, fifth round, the, the day is going to end. So we have fifth, round five, everybody's taken their turn, we're going to reset. We'll go back to round one, we'll move the day marker to Tuesday, and then we're going to put all our characters back in the quad here. We'll check the character here to see where she goes next, which is going to be the college hall. And then we're gonna check action cards. If I don't have any action cards, I'll draw up to two. If I have more than two, I'll simply keep what I have. Make sure to use these cards because these are bonuses that you can either use on your turn, on another player's turn, or any time you would like. It really just depends on the card and they say specifically what they do on them. And that's basically the game. Roll, move, obtain a spot, gain the benefit, and pass. If you land on one of the main circles in the middle of the game, in the outside middle of the game board, that's going to give you a specific stat and you can stop there. And if you land on a circular pink space that has your crush, you may affection roll them by rolling the main affection die, rolling the bonus die, adding your stats up and comparing it to theirs. And if you meet or exceed, you score points. 
When the end of the game comes by, which is after the fifth day on the fifth round, you're gonna score yourself. You're gonna see how many of these pink uh, points that you've gained from affection rolls, how many of each stat you've reached the very far end, which will score you an additional up to six points, and you'll check bonus cards. And bonus cards can give you valuable victory points as well. To affection to the player or players with the least successful affection rates. Or to affection to the players who ended the game closest to the middle of the quad here. And these are ways you can gain bonus points that can make, make or break your success in the game. You only know about one of them, however, so you'll have to see what other players are doing throughout the game to determine if you can get it. Anyway, that's the basic idea of how to play the game. Work of art, or work of heart. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So I have a slight caveat before we start into it. It's really light. Basically, when you're placing these little movement markers, what it does is it covers the space up. You can still walk onto that space, however, and if you do, you're just not gonna gain the bonus there. So there are spaces that will slowly get covered up, covered up throughout the game by the different players' movement markers. Those spaces are still available. You just can't simply well, gain any value from them. However, there are some perks or unique benefits that you can actually gain the, 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 the perks, uh, perk or bonus anyway. Uh, additionally, you can't walk into another player's space unless it is one of the larger areas on the game board. However, there are also perks that will allow you to push players back to the quad here when you have them upgraded. There is a number of different perks in the game, like Charm for the red stat, which is letting you to reroll your movement. Brawn, which says if you land on an occupied space, you can send that player back to the campus quad. Or Kindness, if you land on a space with a tile on it, ignore the tile and take the reward under it, the movement tile, right? And there are more. The other two that are really important are Mojo. Uh, these are perk one and perk two. One will allow you to reroll your affection die. So let's say that you roll a one, which only gives you one stat to your interest. And then you roll a one, two, that's a better roll. So rerolling this is very powerful. And perk two is allowing you to use the movement die for your affection roll by rerolling it as well. If I roll the one, I could then re-roll it and hopefully get a five. But you have to choose. Whatever you re-roll is what you get. And that's pretty much it. Uh, let's just get into it now. So this is a little dating simulator game. This game plays kind of like a classic game with a lot of luck-based rolling and mitigation. Mitigation is very important in the game, and as you'll notice for the different characters that you're trying to uh, win their affection for, they're going to have a higher uh, affection roll needed as days progress. 5, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And they're all different. The affection rates are all different for each of the characters. And you're going to be having to try to reach the location that they're at. You're going to have to try and make it there. Um, and you're going to try and have to re-roll or roll the dice correctly. Another thing that's pretty cool is each of the characters have a quirk, like playing with the boys. Anytime someone interested in me lands on an action space, every player gets to draw an action card. Let's all do our best out there, team. So the game will change a little bit based on who the characters are, who, what characters are in the game and what they're trying to achieve. Uh, so you can kind of have a unique game experience just by adding in different love interests each and every time that you play. Action cards have a variety of different things that you can do, like giving players minus one to their current affection roll, using a perk that you don't currently have uh, active or available, or uh, if another player enters a trait building, you can stop them from leveling up that trait. It's kind of dirty. Before moving, switch your positions with any two players. Uh, swap the level of any two of your traits. Instead of moving this turn, you can go to direct directly to any building that you'd like. I think you get the idea. Some of these can be really useful at certain times, and they have to be kind of pick and choose your moment, I should say. Uh, the artwork for the game is pretty cool. I like it. It feels kind of like a, it's got this like Japanese animation manga st style vibe. Uh, it's got this classic game style vibe and it's got a little bit of modern thrown in there with the unique hidden bonus cards, the way the events work and the action cards. The story is attached mainly to the event cards in the game where you'll actually have to read them out. Well, you don't have to, but I suggest it. It'll explain like everyone goes to see Tina give an explosive performance with their band, Drums of War, at the school theater. You're all jamming out in the front row and suddenly a mosh pit breaks out. Everyone leaves death with several bruises, cuts, and scrapes. Someone even breaks their arm. It's a pretty good night. And as you can see, each of the characters have their own, like, persona. They have their own qualities and quirks and interests. And uh, there's even in the rulebook a nice page, like, 
explaining what all the characters, I believe, yeah, how the the lore for each of the love interests and whether or not you can you want to woo them. And you can basically kind of choose your own characters or you can choose randomly what characters. And also each character has a front and back side. So you can actually play uh, with a female and male version of each of the characters. Uh, so you get to actually play as a, uh, to woo either a male or a female. Oh, and there's also, <laughs> You can also try and uh, woo the original creator of art, Dr. Jonathan Dramathon III, or of course the uh, reverse version, uh, Dr. Johanna Dramathon. Uh, this one is very, very hard to woo though, so uh, woo, at your, woo at your own peril, I should say. Uh, I like this style of a game. It's a cool modern twist uh, to a classic style game where you're rolling to move. There's tons of mitigation allowing you to change up your re-rolls or how you move, utilizing action cards to go to certain spaces. It's very simple. It's a game that you can teach really quickly. You walk on it, you roll, walk in a space, gain the bonus perk, draw an action card or an event card, and then you're done and the next player goes. And occasionally you're gonna to have to attempt an affection roll, which can either be affected by other players or you just get bad luck. But you'll be rolling these two dice, checking to see the stat, checking to see your values on your board, as well as what you rolled for your movement die and did you succeed? And if you did, you gain victory points. And going along, uh, as well as always remembering your bonus card roll, what that is and entitle, entails and how you try and get those bonus points, as well as kind of watching other players. Another cool thing about this game too is there are different game modes. I explained just one of them to you, but there are a few other ones. You have the romantic rival mode, which is a four player game mode that says that two groups of uh, rivals each select a love interest to romance. And how this works is it's basically a one on one, uh, but you're playing two one on ones on the same game board and you're still competing against each other. And so it's like me and Bill are trying to get after Susie and uh, uh, I don't know, Callie and Rachel are trying to get after Jim and you're, you're going to score and you can actually have two winners in the mode. Whereas flying solos, each player picks a different love uh, interest to romance and to win a player needs to end the game with 10 or more affection points. And this mode can also have multiple winners. So you can actually kind of change the game on how you'd like to play. I think actually the team game mode for four is pretty cool or the, the rivals mode. Uh, and I like the harem mode as well for the first game. It's the most simple to understand, less extra special abilities. And when you want to add more that you can. Uh, straight up take that action style cards, event cards that change the game ever so slightly, but they're never a bad card. You're always going to get good cards here. Just some might benefit other players as well as yourself. The game board is my favorite. I think it's a really cool idea to have this double thick board that allows you to block up spaces on the game board when you land on them to kind of prevent other players from getting things. Um, all while being careful of whether or not a certain character has a perk to send you all the way back home or not, because players are going to try and attempt to stop you from wooing your love interest. And so there is a theme attached into this game where you're trying to woo and other people are also trying to do so. And they're like, there's a combative element. Sometimes the game plays nicely. Sometimes people decide to be mean, but it's not always mean. There's just moments of the game where it can be kind of nasty. But otherwise, you're playing kind of the style of classic modern game. It's like classic, why don't I call it classic modern because it's like roll to move. Move, but you don't lose any turns, um, but there are elements that kind of affect you in the take that aspect of the game. If you're looking for a game like this that has kind of this a dating simulator type twist, I think this is going to be a solid choice for you. There's not a lot of games I've played that have a dating sim to it. Uh, Love Battle High School is probably the one I can think of off the top of my head. That's probably my favorite, but it is a different game. That game is a lot that game's probably even more random than this, this one. If you're just like really delving into those type of dating sims, but also really delving into the randomness of die rolling, this has got a lot more mitigation. Uh, this is a lot simpler to understand as far as where to move, what to do, try and gain the affection, remember the bonus cards. And so it's simplified and condensed. And I actually know two people who are going to really, really enjoy this game. Probably would be a very good live stream game too. It's a fun game to watch. People come by and see the game and it looks nice. And the art is fun. Yeah, overall, just a really fun, basic game that's easy to pick up, easy to teach, and easy to restart or pet put away. Uh, all while being a large space on the tabletop with beautiful, like, vivid artwork. Uh, like I said, the only negatives I have for it are if you don't like the kind of roll to move aspect. Without the, there's no lose turns though. But if the roll to move, the kind of luck based interactions where you're rolling the die, sometimes you just get terrible rolls on your affection and you do not score. And it's a really bad feels bad moment. Even if you've increased all your stats, 
fighting against the guy who's got 14 affection and you only roll a one and his one is red and the highest you can have is four. Now you need to roll a six. That's still only 10. So then you need cards to possibly do it and you just can't. You have to be able to re-roll the die. And if you can't do that, then you just, you're just out of luck. And so there's those feel bad moments in this game. And also if you don't like games where players are just like, oh, it's the last round of the game for the, for the day. Uh, and you're almost there to get to your love interest. Oh, there you are, you're almost there, you run away. And then they go, I'm gonna play a card to send you back to the quad or I'm gonna walk onto your space and I'm gonna send you back to the quad. And now you just can't get there because your highest movement is six. Ouch. Otherwise, though, if you don't mind those style, styles of games and you don't mind to have a little bit of a dating sim style game, and that's something you really enjoy, you like those type of animes, it's kind of a guilty pleasure of mine, then I suggest you take a look at Work of Heart, a fun game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Work of Heart. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and take a look at the game. And of course, if you liked our video, maybe you've seen more than one of our videos in the past, consider liking, commenting, and perhaps subscribe and hit that subscribe bell notification button that lets you see more of our videos that we produce. We try and produce at least three a week. We do a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. We do a Thursday whatnot stream. We sell games, we show off games, we sell dice and all kinds of other stuff. All right guys, that's pretty much all you have for this time. And as always, I look forward to dating, dating one of these people and you not dating one of these people next time. I almost said dating you next time. It's, I got a wife. I can get in trouble for that.